So dear students, now we know the boundaries of the lobes of the hemisphere, cerebral hemisphere. Now we are going to discuss about the sulci gyri and the functional areas of suprolateral surface. I told you the cerebrum or a cerebral hemisphere, it is having three surfaces. Say like this: suprolateral surface, then inferior surface. And medial surface. See, this is what the anatomical position. I told you this is my left hemisphere, and this is the anatomical position. So this is the medial surface towards the midline. So medial surface, and this surface, so prolateral surface, then inferior surface. Okay, inferior surface it is having orbital and tendoral part. Now we are going to see the details of this suprolateral surface. What are the sulci and the gyri? This means sulcus. Sulcus means groove. See here we can see numerous grooves. Okay. And between two adjacent grooves, there we can see one elevated area. This one, okay, that one is a gyrus. So, sulcus and so our sulci and a gyri or gyrus. Okay, so now we are going to see what are the sulci gyri and the functional areas of the suprolateral surface. See, suprolateral surface, there we can see first uh, we have to see the frontal lobe. What are the sulci and the gyri of the frontal lobe? So, just in front of the central sulcus, there we are having one more sulcus. Which is almost parallel to the central, it is known as pre central. Pre central means in front of the central. Okay, so that is what pre central sulcus. Okay, so we have to identify that sulcus. See here in this image, see this one, this is the central sulcus. Okay, almost parallel to that central sulcus. See this sulcus, this is what the pre central sulcus. Now, between the pre central sulcus and central sulcus, there will be a gyre, gyrus. That one is a precentral gyrus, means it is also located in front of the central sulcus. So, this one is precentral and it's a gyrus, so precentral gyrus. So, here we, we are having precentral gyrus and precentral sulcus. Now, we have to go through the model. See, we already identified this one as the central sulcus. This group, this is what the central sulcus. See, in front of the central sulcus, this one. And almost parallel okay see this one is a pre central sulcus means it is seen in front of this central sulcus so pre central sulcus between the central and the pre central sulci there we are having the pre central gyrus clear so that is what the pre central sulcus and the pre central gyrus then the area which is seen in front of the pre central sulcus see this is what the pre central sulcus in front of that see this area this complete area it is divided into three gyri superior frontal gyrus middle frontal gyrus inferior frontal gyrus by two sulcus see here we can see superior frontal sulcus and inferior frontal sulcus so this area which is divided into three gyri so what are the three gyri superior frontal gyrus middle frontal gyrus inferior frontal gyrus by two sulcus superior frontal sulcus and inferior frontal sulcus. We will see that in the model. See, this area, this complete area, it is divided into three gyre. See, this is what the superior, this one is a middle, and this area, this is the inferior frontal gyre. It belongs to the frontal lobe. Okay, so superior frontal, middle frontal, inferior frontal gyre. Okay, by two sulcus. See this sulcus, superior frontal sulcus. Then this one is the inferior frontal sulcus. So this two sulcus divides this area into three gyrus: superior, middle, inferior frontal gyrus. Now see inferior frontal gyrus. There we are having two more sulcus. See, see this one. This sulcus which runs forward, anterior. Sorry, this one, this one runs upward. This one is an anterior ascending, and this one which runs forward, anterior horizontal. So anterior horizontal and ascending. Okay, two more sulci are there. Horizontal and ascending. Ascending means upward. So ascending and horizontal sulci. Now this inferior frontal gyrus, this inferior frontal gyrus is divided into three areas: pars orbitalis. And this area is almost triangular shape, parts triangularis, parts opercularis, parts orbitaris, triangularis, 
of Vicularis. Means this inferior frontal gyrus is divided into three parts by these two sulcus. What are they? Horizontal and anterior, horizontal and anterior ascending. What are the gyri? Parts orbitalis, which is related to the orbital part. So parts orbitalis, parts triangularis, almost triangular, then parts opercularis. So these are the sulci and the gyri of this frontal lobe. Okay, we'll see in that image. See this area already told you superior frontal gyrus, middle frontal gyrus, inferior frontal gyrus by two sulcus, superior frontal sulcus and inferior frontal sulcus. This inferior frontal gyrus is again divided into three parts by two sulcus, anterior horizontal and anterior ascending. Now the gyria parts orbitalis, triangularis, opercularis. Now see the now we know what is meant by precentral sulcus, what is meant by precentral gyrus. Then superior, middle, and inferior frontal gyrus, superior and inferior frontal sulcus or sulci. Then the last point, anterior horizontal and anterior ascending ramus or lateral sulcus or sulcus. Then parts triangular, so parts orbitalis, parts triangularis, and parts opercularis. So these are the sulci and sulci and gyrus in this frontal lobe. And here we can see one functional area. See this area, this is what the motor area. This precentral gyrus, it is a motor area. It controls our activities, muscle, muscle activities. Okay, so anyway, this is what the motor area. And this area, posterior end of the superior frontal gyrus, middle frontal gyrus, and inferior frontal gyrus. Only this posterior end. That is what the pre-motor area. So this is the motor area. This is a pre-motor area. Then parts triangularis and parts opercularis. Procaster speech area. Okay, speech area. Procaster speech area. Okay, here middle part of the middle frontal gyrus. This is a frontal eye field. We'll discuss the details later. So anyway, these are the sulci and gyri of this functional. Oh, sorry, sulci and gyri of this frontal lobe. Now, sulci and gyri of the parietal lobe. See, almost parallel to the central sulcus. See, this is what the parietal lobe. Okay. See, almost parallel to the central sulcus. See, this is a central sulcus. So, behind that, here also we can see another sulcus par parallel to that central. So, this sulcus, it is a post-central sulcus. Then, the remaining area of the... Ah, so, uh, between the central sulcus and the post-central sulcus, there we are having the post-central gyrus. So this gyrus, this is a post-central gyrus and this sulcus, it is a post-central sulcus. Then the remaining area of the parietal lobe, see, so means the, this area, it is divided into two parts, superior parietal lobule and inferior parietal lobule by one sulcus. It is known as intraparietal sulcus. See, intraparietal means it is seen inside the parietal lobe. So, intraparietal sulcus divided the parietal lobe into two superior parietal lobule and the inferior parietal lobule. It is not lobe, it is lobule. Okay, so superior parietal lobule and the inferior parietal lobule by this intraparietal sulcus. So what are the sulci? So here post-central sulcus and here intraparietal sulcus. What are the gyrus seen in this lobe? Post-central gyrus, then superior parietal lobule, inferior parietal lobule. This inferior parietal lobule is divided into anterior, middle and posterior part by this sulci. What are the sulci? See. This is the lateral sulcus, posterior ramus of lateral sulcus, then superior temporal sulcus, inferior temporal sulcus. It reverses this in, inferior parietal lobule into anterior, middle, and posterior part. Now we'll see. See, now we know what is meant by post-central post sulcus and post-central layers. See, this is a post-central sulcus, which is seen behind that, and this one is a post-central gyrus. And superior and inferior parietal lobule and intraparietal sulcus. Superior, see, this is the intraparietal sulcus, and this area, this is what the superior parietal lobule, and this area, this is what the inferior parietal lobule. Anterior, middle, and posterior part 
by the posterior ramus of lateral sulcus, superior and inferior temporal sulcus, not gyrus sulcus. See, this is what the superior temporal, and this one is a inferior temporal. So here, this is anterior anterior part, this is the middle part, and this one is a posterior part divided by this in uh, inferior parietal lobule is divided into three anterior middle posterior by this three sulcus okay so this is what the posterior runs of lateral sulcus in superior temporal sulcus then this one is inferior temporal sulcus now next we are going to see the temporal lobe we already saw see this is what the temporal lobe here we can see two sulcus one is superior temporal sulcus the other one is inferior temporal sulcus see this is a superior temporal sulcus this is the inferior temporal sulcus as a result we are having three gyri the one is this second one is this third one is this the so, superior temporal gyrus middle temporal gyrus inferior temporal gyrus so two sulcus what are they superior and inferior temporal sulcus and three gyrus superior temporal gyrus middle temporal gyrus and inferior temporal gyrus that's all and the last point about the occipital law what are the sulci gyri of the occipital law see occipital law the occipital pole which is separated from the occipital law by the lunate sulcus see here we are having a lone, semi lunar shaped sulcus which separates this occipital pole so occipital pole means the posterior end of the cerebral hemisphere this is what the occipital pole so this occipital pole is separated from the remaining part of the occipital lobe by this sulcus or which is a lunar shaped sulcus it is known as lunate sulcus then the occipital lobe which is divided into superior occipital gyrus and inferior occipital gyrus by the lateral occipital sulcus what is meant by that see this area this is what the superior occipital gyrus and this area this is what the inferior occipital gyrus these two gyri are separated by the sulcus this is what the lateral occipital or lateral sulcus so lateral occipital sulcus superior occipital gyrus inferior occipital gyrus and here we are having another sulcus that one is a transverse sulcus which separates this and we not discuss about that so these are the some of the sulci and the gyri of this suprolateral surface so first we have gone through the frontal lobe then parietal lobe then temporal lobe lastly this one occipital lobe now what are the important functional areas I already told you the precentral gyrus here we are having the motor area this area controls our motor activity and this area posterior end of the superior frontal gyrus middle frontal gyrus inferior frontal gyrus this area which is the pre motor area and here middle part of the middle frontal gyrus it controls the eye movement conjugate movement so this is a frontal eye field then this area parts triangulars and the parts opercularis it is a broca speech area or motor speech area which controls the speech so motor premotor frontal eye field then broca speech area then what are the functional areas seen in this parietal lobe see here this is the sensory area post central gyrus it is the sensory area then temporal lobe is also having one important area here in the superior temporal gyrus there we are having the auditory area this area this is a auditory area which controls hearing okay so auditory area so these are the some of the important functional areas in this suprolateral surface so, so suprolateral surface is clear